This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. This episode from the life of Sherlock Holmes will be transmitted to our men and women overseas by shortwave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Petri Wine brings you... Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invite you to listen to Dr. Watson tell about another exciting adventure he shared with his old friend, that master detective Sherlock Holmes. And say, I want to ask you if you've sent in for that little present we've got for you. You know, that swell recipe calendar? It's free, of course, and it's really something. It's a two-year calendar for 1945 and 46, and it's beautifully done in full color. But the best part of it is that it's jammed with recipes and ideas for cooking with Petri wine. Send for your free recipe calendar tonight. Just send your name and address to Petri Wine, P-E-T-R-I, Petri Wine, San Francisco 26, California. San Francisco 26, California. The requests for this swell calendar have been coming in so fast that you better hurry up and get yours before we get snowed under. Write tonight, and we'll send you your free recipe calendar at once. And now for our weekly visit with the good Dr. Watson. Let's see if he's waiting for us. Good evening, Doctor. Playing the phonograph, I see. Yes, my boy. And that particular melody has some very potent memories for me. Here, I'll I'll turn the thing off. You haven't come here to listen to a Mozart sonata. You want a story, don't you, young fellow, my lad? That's right, Doctor. Well, let's sit down. Uh, All right. That's better. Now I'll now I'll tell you what. Oh, thank you, Doctor. It began in Vienna in 1889, many many years before the insane house painter named Schickel Gruber had converted that gay city into a place of fear and oppression. And uh, what were you and Sherlock Holmes doing there, Doctor? Just uh, taking a trip? Mr. Foreman, in those early days of our association, we didn't have the time or the money for just uh, for taking trips. No, 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 we were in Vienna because Holmes had been engaged in certain highly important investigations. We were staying in a charming little pension inhabited by students and musicians. And on the night the story began, we'd finished dinner and had returned to our room. I was busy making some notes on the investigation we'd just concluded. And Holmes was scraping away at his beloved violin. Confounded. What's wrong? Why can't I get it? Oh, it sounds sounds very pretty to me. Pretty, really, old chap. Ah. I'm on a chair. Hmm? A happy fingered one at that. Listen to this. Oh, sounds like a fiddler at an Irish wake. Oh, take it easy, Holmes. Take it easy. There's no need to fling the violin down like that. What's no, chap? Why, with all your other excellent qualities, are you not a pianist? What's a piano got to do with it? In this case, everything. There's a piano in this room, and if you could play it, the Mozart sonata I'm struggling with might have some meaning. Come in. Oh, good evening, Fräulein. You wish to see me? You are Herr Sherlock Holmes. That is my name. Then you are. I wish to see you. I am Leo Uhlenstein. I live here in this pension. How do you do? do? Now, this is my friend, Dr. Watson. How do you do, Herr Doctor? I'm very glad to meet you, my dear man. Fräulein Uhlenstein, uh, may I pay my tribute to the brilliance of your piano playing? You have the exact precision of phrasing that Mozart demands. How do you know of me? Both Dr. Watson and I were present at the command performance you gave at the Imperial Court. Fortnight ago. Hey, Julius, I knew I'd seen you somewhere before. <laughs> uh, my friend was just expressing the need of a pianist as you walked in, young lady. Perhaps the, oh, the I'm two sorry. of you. I do not play with amateur. Amateur? Well, really. I do not amateur. mean to be rude. It's just that my life is dedicated to my professional oh, career. I quite understand, Fraulein. And now please tell me, uh, what can I do to help you? I must presume you have come to see me in my professional capacity. Jawohl. That is correct, Herr Holmes. Though I realize to a great detective like you, my. Problem must seem quite trivial. I, I am being blackmailed by a man in this pension. Hmm? Hmm? He is Shandor Orpadi, a Hungarian painter who lives in the studio upstairs. Shandor Orpadi. Yes, I think I've heard of him. Since two months now, 
Ever since he know my secret, he's come to me for money, and today he tell me he must have 250 gulden, or he will go to the police. I have not that much money. Herr Holmes, please to tell me what I shall do. Just what hold does he have over you? My brother, Karl, he got into some trouble here, and the police were looking for him, but he ran away to München, uh, as you say, Munich, and Sander our party knew of this. He was a friend of mine, so I thought. When this trouble come on my brother, I turned to Shandor for help. He smuggled Carl out of the country, and he turned on me for blackmail. He's a bad man. I wish he was dead. Most blackmailers are cowards at heart. I think Dr. Watson and I will call on the gentleman. By the way, does he have any written evidence of your brother's crime? Yeah, he has his address in Munich. I show Shandor a letter from him when he first go there, and he keep the letter. They'll not give it back to me. And if he gave the police your brother's address, they'd, uh, they'd arrest him, eh? They would, of course. Yes, it would. Here, Holmes, will you please to tell me what I should do? I cannot go on this way. My, my music now, is... Now, Pauline, simply... calm yourself. I should be most happy to help you, and uh, if you will lead the way, we'll see how persuasive we can be with Shandola Paddy. <laughs> Studio Herr Holmes, at the end of the corridor. I see. Now remember, young lady, you'd better let me do most of the talking. He must be out. That is possible. Ah, locked. I think, bearing in mind our party's profession, we'll take the liberty of opening his door. That doesn't look a very complicated lock to me. No, oh, I think this skeleton key will do the trick. It's very dangerous here, Holmes. If Shandor oh, finds no, you, no, don't... no, 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 don't you worry about that, Fraulein. We're perfectly capable of, of taking care of ourselves. Ah, uh-huh. there we are. Close the door behind you, Willie Watson. Can't see a thing. Can't strike a match. <laughs> Quick, Cartwright. Look at him. Thumped over his desk. Light the gas, will you, Watson? Quite sure, I hope. There. Judging from his appearance, Fräulein Ullenstein, I think Sandor Pari had other enemies besides yourself. Less scrupulous enemies. He's been strangled. Look at the finger marks on his throat. Is he? Yes. His body is still warm, though. I'm afraid he's dead. I am glad. He was a bad man. He deserved to die. Watson, do you notice that the fingers of the killer have broken the skin and drawn blood? I do, yes, yes, sir. Yes. Should we not communicate with the police? Before we do that, Pauline, we must see if we can find your brother's letter. Not remove the body, will you, Watson? Lying across an open dispatch box that might contain the document in question. Right, John. Come on, Buffalo. That's it. Ah. Ah. For a painter, the late Mr. Apari was an unusually methodical man. I've written files here in alphabetical order. Here we are. You, Fräulein Lea Ullenstein. Yeah. And the letter has the Munich postmark. Oh. I think this must be the document in question. Will you examine it, please, Fräulein? Yeah. Yeah, this is the letter. Here, yeah, Holmes, how can I thank you? There's very little thank me for. If the blackmail were still alive, I fear it uh, wouldn't have been so simple a matter. I wonder what other treasures this box contains. Hello. Hello. What is it, Holmes? Huh? Interesting. Extremely interesting. Look at this, old fellow. Good Lord. Information on the case that we've just been working exactly. on. Exactly. And from the names attached to the document, I think we may assume that the dead man did not confine his blackmailing to struggling young pianists. He was after a big game, too. Yes, we'd better be careful, Holmes. I don't think that we should go for the police just yet. No. We'll start by having a little talk with the other residents of this pension. Fraulein... Who lives in the room adjoining this one? I do, Herr Holmes. And the room across the landing? Lai Tong Fo, the great Chinese actor. He's performing here in Vienna. I see. Then I think we'll start by calling on him. Return to your room, Fräulein, and we will let you know later what we've found. In the meantime, say nothing to anyone of what has happened. I will do everything you tell me, Herr Holmes. And please, once again, please let me thank you for what you've done for me. You know, Holmes, I'm not sure that girl didn't strangle a party herself. A pianist would have unusual strength in her fingers. And we know that she had the, the motive. And look 
how unnaturally calm she was when she realized the man was dead. I disagree with you, old fellow. Huh? I think what you refer to as unnatural calmness is really the cold detachment of the two artists. Well, I have a feeling that we should keep an eye on her, just the same. We will, Watson, we will. And now I suggest we pay a visit across the landing to the distinguished Chinese actor, Mr. Ling Tu Fo. <laughs> You wish to see me? If you could spare us a moment, sir. But of course, gentlemen. Uh, please to come in. My name is Sherlock Holmes. This is my colleague, Dr. Watson. Uh, how, how do you do, do, sir? How do you do? I am greatly flattered to meet you. Uh, you are not here to see me in your professional capacity, I hope, Mr. Holmes. Oh, no, not exactly. I just wanted to ask you a few questions. Uh, please, to ask me anything. Do you know Shandora Paddy, the painter who lives across the hall? I, uh, I uh, know him by sight. We nod to each other on the stairs. Nothing more. I see. Have you been in your room most of the evening, may I ask? But yes, I have been sitting here quietly for the past few hours, reading over the Analex of Confucius. Uh, may I ask to, where you heard any unusual noises this evening? Sounds of a struggle or a cry from the direction of Sando Pardi's room, for instance? I, uh, I uh, do not think so. Wait, yes, yes. I think I did hear laced voices in there and the sound of a cry. About how long ago was this? Oh, an hour ago, perhaps more. Is uh, anything wrong? Has the trouble come to Shandor? Shandor? I thought you said you had uh, only a nodding acquaintance uh, with the gentleman. Well, he is a, a well-known artist. It is only natural I should call him by his first name, Mr. Holmes, even though I do not know him. Uh, has something happened to him? I'm afraid so, but I can't tell you any more about it at the moment. Thank you for your cooperation. We shall see you again, no doubt. Good evening, sir. Good evening, gentlemen. Good, uh, good, evening, good evening. evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, that fellow wasn't telling us the truth, you know, Holmes. He seemed very shifty to me. Well, where are we going now? Downstairs to the porter's desk. There's only one entrance to this house, you'll remember. The porter may be able to tell us of uh, any unusual comings and goings in the last hour or two. Come on, old chap, don't dawdle. There's a great deal of work ahead of us. What can I do for you? How long have you been on duty tonight? Uh, since five o'clock. Did you notice what people have come in or gone out since then? No one has gone out. Ah, splendid. And who came in? Fräulein Ullenstein came in just after six, oh, and yes. uh, her appetite, the painter, came in a few minutes later. That is all. Ah. Who lives in the other ground floor apartments besides Dr. Watson and myself? There are only two other apartments. In the one to the right of the corridor lives uh, Madame Janssen. She's a Swedish lady, mm-hmm. a sculptor. And in the other? Signora Violetti, the Italian opera singer. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm much obliged to you. I'm happy to be of service here, Holmes. Well, where are we off to now? Back, back to our room? Oh, no, we'll call on Madame Violetti if she's at home. Oh, it sounds as if she's very much at home. And he's a friend of a come to see me. Bravo! Bravissimo! I have so much wish to make her acquaintance. Sit down, sit down. Uh, sit down. No, 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 no. I'm afraid we can only stay for a moment, madam. My, my friend wanted to ask you a few questions. Yes, signora. I just want to know... I know if... your questions. Oh. You play the violin. I have heard you. Yes. You want to know whether the great Valeria will allow you to accompany her in a magnificent soprano aria, a so from Mozart's Il Flotto Magico. Yes. You let this answer to your question is a C.C. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, me, signora, but uh, if you don't mind... Uh, 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 but that was not one of my questions. It was not. But I will sting it with you just this day. You flatter me, but um, at the moment there are other things on my mind. Signora Violetti, do you know Shandora Paddy? Mm, by his side. That is all. He may cry at me, but I know pay attention. I do not like on Gallant. You haven't seen him this evening? No. I've been alone reviewing the score at La Troviata. Uh, uh, yes. I am to sing it next week here in Vienna. Yes. I hope you will both be present. It would be a great 
three to come here. I'm sure it would be, Signora. Oh, now you'll excuse us. Oh, 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 it is sad. You must go so soon. But come and see me again, and I will sing for you both before you leave Vienna. <laughs> Great Scott, what a ghastly woman. She, she's not your murderess, I'm sure. And now I suppose we'll have to question this sculptress woman. And then we'll talk to everyone in the house. Now, I think before we visit her, and we'll examine the dead man's room a little more closely, that black tin dispatch box may hold the key to this mystery. <laughs> Why didn't I go through these papers thoroughly at first? Uh, tell, tell an interesting story. A party had obviously been blackmailing Madame Janssen, the, the sculptor. Yes, and also our friend, the Chinese actor, Lai Tung Fo. Then Lai Tung Fo was lying when he said that he didn't know a party. Obviously. By George, three of the four people living in this house in his power. Hello. Uh, uh, what's the matter? What have you found? Footprints in the cigar ash on the carpet. Prints of a small foot leading us to this closet. But he must have been hiding in there. Uh, possibly. Uh-huh. Take a look at these, Watson. Strands of hair. Long black hair. Where were they? On a hook in the cupboard. Someone bracing themselves back so as to be out of sight could easily leave such evidence. I've got it, Holmes. I've got it. The long black hair, the long nails that caused the peculiar marks on a party's throat, and a small footprint. It was a woman. Possibly, but which one? Fraulein Ullenstein and Signora Violetti both have blonde hair, remember? And it must be that sculptor's woman. Not necessarily. Who else, not a woman, might have small feet, long nails, and long black hair? By Jove, the Chinese access me. Come on. Oh, I hope he's still there. Come on, sir. Come on. Let's go in. Holmes. Look at him. He's praying. His head's in his hands. Oh, my dear fellow, I'm afraid prayers can do him no good now. He's been strangled. Strangled with his own cue. <laughs> Dr. Watson's story will continue in just a second. So I'm going to take that second for a fast question. I know you've probably tasted port wine, but have you ever tasted Petri California port? Have you? Because if you haven't tried Petri port, well, you can just tell yourself right now you don't know how good a port can be. Petri port is rich, red, and hearty. But what you want to know is how does it taste? The answer to that is short and sweet. The taste is terrific. And say, Petri California Muscatel is on the terrific side, too. Petri Muscatel has the flavor and fragrance of real juicy Muscat grape. Mm -hmm. Both wines are perfect after dinner or any time you're sitting around talking with your friend. Try them. They're great. They've got to be because they're Petri. <laughs> And now, back to tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure. The famous pair are staying in Vienna, where they've become involved in the mysterious strangling of a notorious blackmailer. As we rejoin our story, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are cross-questioning another of the suspects, a Swedish sculptress by the name of Madame Young. What do you want with me? Why have you come in here? Well, we just wanted to ask you a few questions, madam. To admire your figurines, may I ask if you always work in clay? Yeah, but what's that to you? Do you wish to buy some of my sculpture? Uh, no, but I assure you the question was pertinent. Tell me who you are and stop wasting my time. Uh, my friend is a private detective, madam. A detective? Who sent you here? No one sent me here. I'm conducting an investigation of the murder of Shandor Apadi. Shandor dead? Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad. Yes, madam, but we happen to know that you had a motive for killing him. He'd been blackmailing you. Get out of here! What right have you to come here and question no, me? No, 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 no. Look here, madam. If you know what's good for you, you will answer our question. And if question. you know what's good for you, you'll get out of here, both of you. Come along, Watson. But, Holmes, you can't possibly... Forgive me, madam, for our intrusion. We meant no rudeness. You have been rude. Intolerably rude. Go away. Whatever made you back down like that, Holmes? Obviously, she's the killer. Rubbish. But her hair was jet black. Yes, but it was short hair. 
And didn't you notice the size of her feet anyway? She works in clay. If it had been marble, I might have suspected her. Pardon my soul, Holmes. I wish you'd tell me what you're driving at. I have the answer to these killings now, Watson. Hmm? But I'll have to prove it. I'm afraid I must work without you, old chap. Do you mind waiting for me in our room? No, no, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That may be dangerous. Wait for me in Signora Violetti's room, if you don't mind. I'll join you there as soon as my work is done. Pretend that you have returned because you were so enchanted with her voice. Oh, great Scott Holmes, you can't ask me to be alone with, with that dreadful woman. Please do as I say, Watson, and don't question me. There isn't a moment to be lost. That aria, my dear doctor. No, 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 madam, I'm afraid I don't. No. You've not heard of our great Giuseppe Verdi? What's up, what's up, what? Well, I heard of him, of course, but uh, I can't identify his, his work. <laughs> that was from a Rigoletto, you silly man. Rigoletto? Tom, oh. tell me your favorite composer. I will sing a something that is just for you. I will turn the gas light down. No, 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 no. That will be so much more romantic. <laughs> now, who is your favorite composer? Well, uh, I don't know that I have any favorite. Uh, uh, what's his name? Wag- Wagner's very fine, you know. Oh, Wagner is a hobby like a most of German composers. But the Alati can master him. Oh, Lord, here she goes again. It is I. Great heavens, it's a Chinese actor. I am sorry to make commotion, but as we say in my country, those who return from grave speak with double knowledge. Oh, you devil! You devil! I kill you once! I kill you once! I kill you again! Thank you for the confession, Senora Violetti. You can testify to it, Watson. Holmes! No, you don't, Senora. Your nails are too sharp for my liking. She's painted, Holmes. Painted, eh? What an undramatic exit for a most dramatic lady. Well, Holmes, now that you've turned Signora Violetti over to the police, perhaps you tell me what made you certain that she was the murderess. It was obvious from the beginning that her party was strangled by someone with long fingernails. When Lai Tung Fo was killed, it ruled him out. Then who was the woman with a motive and long nails? Oh, Mr. Mention, my dear fellow, was the woman Fraulein Ullenstein? No. Being a concert pianist, her nails were naturally short. The sculptress who worked in clay, again, no. That would make it impossible for her to mould her delicate figurines. Therefore, Signora Violetti, by the process of elimination, was the only woman with long nails. But why did she strangle the Chinese actor, too? Undoubtedly, he witnessed the first killing. The long black hairs in the closet were from his cue. I presume that later he threatened Signora Violetti, and so he himself was strangled. I still don't understand why she strangled our party in the first place. Don't you, Watson? Well, I think you'll find that he uh, has been blackmailing her, too. Remember, he had documents incriminating everyone in the house except her. I think... Uh, we may assume she killed him and then removed her own papers from the dispatch box. But I'd no proof, and so, well, I had to frighten her into confession. So that's why you disguised yourself as Lai Tung Fu. Yes, I borrowed the robes from his room. It was lucky that the lights were low as I entered. Yes. And it's also fortunate that to the average European, all Chinese look alike. Come in. Ah, Fräulein Ullenstein. We'll be coming in to see you in a few minutes. I have been waiting so anxiously. Is everything all right? Well, from your point of view, my, my dear young lady, yes. There's nothing more for you to worry about. Oh, I would like to repay you, Herr Holmes. I, uh, I've done very little for you, but if you really feel that you owe me something... Yeah? Well, perhaps just this once you wouldn't mind, uh, accompanying an amateur. <laughs> it would be a pleasure. What did you wish me to play? A Mozart sonata. But, of course. The rondo from the E-flat, I suppose. Ah, that's huh? splendid. Please, Fräulein. You like 
Nein, Mozart, Herr Doktor. Oh, very much, young lady, very much. In fact, uh, I, uh, I might say he is my favorite composer. <laughs> Charming. Perfectly charming. I only wish that that all our adventures could end so melodiously. <laughs> Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure is written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher and is based on an incident in the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle story, A Case of Identity. Mr. Rathbone appears for the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and Mr. Bruce for the courtesy of Universal Pictures where they are now starring in the Sherlock Holmes series. This is Bill Foreman saying goodnight for the Petri family. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.